Hey, welcome to Friends of Planet Shakers. Today we have one of the most amazing young men that God is using right now in California and around the world. Pastor Jason Lozano runs an incredible church there in LA. You come out of this, you get educated, you get degrees. So not educated, abused, drugs, jail, crime, have an encounter with God, but it doesn't stop with one. It keeps getting stronger and stronger. That's why the Bible says from glory to glory. And so you've got this house happening. And then what did you, what happened? Six months before I met, I met my wife, um, I had an, an, another, visit, another encounter from God, a visitation. And yeah. he, he wrecked me. It was a Moses encounter. Because then God told me, I've heard the cries of the people. At that time, it was very specific, Whittier. And Whittier was the city I was, I was a criminal in. At that time, I wanted to be an evangelist. I don't want to be a pastor because, you know, pastors go through a lot. And I seen my pastor. Yeah. He helped all these people. And they turn around and, and talk about them. And I'm like, yeah. what is this? The, the, the gangs are more faithful than these church people. This is crazy. <laughs> I was like, no, I'll preach in. I'll blow in, blow out, you know. But God put that pastor call in. At that time, I was traveling, but when, when I had that encounter, and God told me, I've heard the cries of the people. Yeah. And I'm going to send you to the Pharaoh of Whittier to tell that Pharaoh to let my people go. Yeah. And, and one of the bondages was a spirit of religion. And um, I had that encounter with God, and I, and I, and I yielded to it. Then I kind of not argue with God, but ask the serious question, Lord, and this is a this is a real encounter. Like I'm hearing God, yeah. and and I said, Lord, I can't go back to that city unless you know they want to kill me. I have a green light, and I said, You want me to go die for you? If that's the case, I'll do it. But I didn't know you want me to die for you. Yeah. And the Lord says, No, don't worry. For everybody that was after your life is dead. Wow. And when I came back, it was true. Now I don't think God killed him. I think their lifestyle killed him. But yeah. God was that specific with me. Yeah. And then we came back and we started the church a week later. Wow. Uh, I told my pastor, I said, Pastor, I had an encounter with God. Uh, I want to, I want, I need to start the church. And he was all excited because, you know, he knows I was going to be an evangelist. I want to be an evangelist. He's like, yeah. you must have heard God. Said, when do you <laughs> want to start it? I said, Sunday. I mean, like, listen, <laughs> why, why are we waiting? And, and you know, because I, I, I've been loyal and everything. So he's yeah. like, yeah. So I started Ugly Art Lounge. Again, humble beginning. Ugly Art Lounge. It was like 10 people, 15 people. And my keyboard player was, he, was, he, would, he, would, he would smoke crack cocaine. <laughs> so I, he'd do good for like a week or two. And then he'd go on a binge. I had to go get him out of the crack house. <laughs> or pray for him. Put him on the stage. <laughs> it was a wild. <laughs> oh, wow. He is, you know, he's a wealthy man now. Wow. Very wealthy. Very, very wealthy. <laughs> I discipled him and he got married, kids, wealthy, but he struggled for a minute. <laughs> but Stephen, that was his name. And, so you're uh, yeah. building the church. The church is growing. You're, you're moving. Um, and I get married. We started the church and we get married right away. I get married yeah. right away. <laughs> yeah. He finds a wife, finds I'm what like, is good. <laughs> yes, and it, was, and it was God. So did the church take off straight away or what happened there? No, no Russell, no Russell, because we I didn't really have um, we I didn't I, my my pastors their church we came out of a real small church yeah so we didn't understand we had the power of God we yeah. had the anointing and the fire but we didn't have structure yeah and I, I used as much structure as we could so the church probably grew 200, 300. I think we meet pack after maybe. I don't know, you know, so many years, we got to 400. And then about seven years ago, maybe now, um, yeah. we, I, I learned a word called structure and systems. <laughs> and once we did that, the church went from a few hundred to almost 2,000 overnight. Wow. Like it just, boom. And it, it wasn't more prayer, more word. It was just the principle of structure and organization. Yeah. And the church just took off. How many years ago did we meet? Five years seven, ago? Seven, seven years ago? No, seven years. Yeah. Because before 
I met, I was with you. The church had already taken off. Yeah. But I was dissatisfied. Yeah. Because I felt like we had lost something in our in our growth. Because you'd gone structure and away from some of the the, the a lot. I think we went a lot from spirit, which is who I am. Yeah. So we meet through a great friend of ours, Pastor Obed. E. Uh, I was going to say Edom. It's not Obed Edom. <laughs> Obed and Martin Edom. Martinez. Yeah. <laughs> Obed Edom, yeah. <laughs> did I meet you first in uh, Palm Springs or did I meet you at the conference? Palm Springs. Right. Palm Springs. And then I went to you. Yeah. And it changed my life. You turn up to a Planet Shakers conference. So what was that experience? I had a vision. Um of a church in LA, 30,000. Yeah. And I saw it. I saw the auditorium. I saw it all. I saw it. And it was like, oh, 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 you know, Planet Shaker. Yeah. It looked like that, but I'd never seen it. Yes. I stepped into the auditorium, you know, that top balcony there. Yeah. I looked down and I just start crying. Wow. And I'm like, this is it. So I felt the power and the anointing, but it was modern. It was structure. It was like, a, it, it was something I never experienced. Yeah. And Russell, Obed told me, he's like, the oil's in this place. Wow. And we were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, a spirit of revival. And I think that's what you carry. The mantle of like, almost like a, there's a brother, I think he's from England, a Welsh revival. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I feel, like a Welsh revival anointing. That's like an old anointing that's on the ministry plan. That's an old anointing that's been re, like um, modernized. Mm -hmm. But that's there's something like a well. And when you've been deep in the spirit, you you, you know you 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 know, you're like whoa. It may it, you just know you're like that's there's a there's something there. That's that, that's God. That's just a, that's and it comes in all kinds of packages. But I've ne I've never seen it in that kind of package. And the energy, <laughs> the excitement of the presence of God and the fire. I always thought that was only for African American churches. Wow. Because that's the only thing I'd experienced anything like that. Like TD Jakes. And I'm like, what the heck? This is crazy. <laughs> and I've been there ever since. In some of our uh, series we're doing on Friends of Planet Shakers, there's people who were there with me at the start. And so they worked through the, the journey of this where we've been, right? And so they'd seen it start from uh, uh, humble beginnings and then God. Uh, breathed upon it and it grew and they saw all that and that's been an incredible journey. You've come in seven years ago, so you're not there 20 years ago, you came in seven years ago. So it's a really interesting perspective because what we birthed it hasn't stopped, it's actually grown in its influence. And so you're in the meeting and you said to me this one thing afterwards, you said you've seen it in conferences but then you turned up to church on Sunday. Um, just to look at it. Do you remember that? And it was like, oh, this is church as well. The crazy part was, because you always go to conference and, you know, first of all, I've, I, I never been to a conference like that. I mean, I fly 18 hours every year just to be there, just for that. That's yeah. a moment. That's a, that's a, a, um, a Jacob place a, where he encountered God. So I'm like, well, this is amazing. And then I get it, I go to your church Sunday thinking, okay, let's let's see what the real deal is. <laughs> but the church was stronger than the the actual conference. Yeah. That blew my mind. Then I knew, okay. See, we gotta be humble enough, Russell, to yeah. see something on somebody and say, I may have something they don't have, but they got something I don't have. And I gotta come under that so that I can. I can, I want to receive that. And that's when God spoke to me too. It was yeah. in Hawaii, but he spoke to me. My spirit was already confirmed. He's like, that's your brother. Yeah. That's your brother. Follow him. Yeah. And you know, Russell, I'll tell you, our church is incredible right now. Well, when yeah. we can have church, you know, yeah. <laughs> the atmosphere. Yeah. And that's all planet shaker. That's uh -huh. all planet shaker. That, 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 that it's just, I can't even, it's just, it's incredible. It's, it's, I'm so, I'm forever grateful. God brought you into my life. God brought you in our life. That's why we're friends. And, uh, you know, iron sharpens iron. Um, 
You came back the second year with Josiah. Josiah passes the church down the road. He's a friend of yours. And there is a meeting that both of you came to the front before the older call had even uh, finished. Uh, Oh, no, we we went like this. We we looked at each other and we're like, oh, man, (laughs) what is about to happen? And we raced each other (laughs) because it was already moving. See, you pick up the wind. Yeah. And you know who you know you know who it is. My favorite speaker is your wife, is, is Pastor Sam. Thanks a lot. I mean, you're good too. Nah. Don't get me wrong, but brother, <laughs> no, she is a powerhouse. Brother, she she doesn't let it go. She yeah. she gets in there and it, it, it's gonna happen. Yeah. It's, and you know, this year we were supposed to go, and then everything happened. And uh, you don't realize how much those things affect and change you. Yeah. Until you don't have it. Yeah. And I pray that when everything comes back to normal, we, we begin to value and appreciate things that sometimes we can take for granted yeah. if we're not careful. And that's one of the things I didn't take for granted, but um, I really miss all of it. And then even the whole like, you know, you go all out, Russell, <laughs> your production. Yeah. It's... You know, all that with the anointing. Uh, <laughs> it's um, Jesus spoke the language of the day. We understand what Babylon's like. We want to speak the language of the day, but we want to be prophetic. It's, it's Jesus spoke the language of the day, but he had power. And so if we can have those two come together with discipleship, because Jesus discipled, he spoke the language of the day and had power, and then he birthed disciples to carry what he carried. And, and so that's the passion of what we're doing. We want to see a contemporary church that has the power of God, that has the excellence of Babylon, but has the discipleship of the kingdom. And so you are a big person on discipleship. You believe that discipleship is the key to uh, releasing an army. You know, you talk about the church being a bride, um, a hospital, uh, an army. There's different Body. things you, you have for the church. Um, but your passion is raising up disciples. Tell us a little bit about that. I get, well, again, though, what you're saying before that about, um, that, that was one thing is that I, I, you, it's, it, what do you, like, it's, what do you find the modernness and the power together? It's, uh, that's, that's, that's really a, a grace, but thank you for being obedient. Cause that's not easy. So discipleship, I think we reflect in our ministries, our process. Uh, and I think God processed you to produce uh, what you produce. Yeah. I think he processed me through um, the demoniac men. Yeah. He processed me from, from and, and you know, he could have set me free like that, Russ. He did it to the demoniac man. The guy was in his right mind like that. Yeah. The Lord didn't do that with me, Russ. Yeah. He, he, he didn't do a supernatural miracle that way. He took me through a really probably a, a five-year journey on recalibrating yep. my mind, yep. tearing down, uprooting everything Father didn't plant, and then rebuilding me. Yep. Now, that process has to be managed not only by the Holy Spirit, yep. but it has to be managed by, I believe, leadership. Yep spiritual fathers, not manipulation and control, yeah. but real genuine, like my dad, my spiritual dad, he's still my dad, Pastor Mark. He was so gentle and kind and just God was molding me, but he was right there to coach me and father me. My dad left me. Yeah. My father abandoned me. I didn't have that. So he became that spiritual father in my life to mentor me to develop me, to help me to think the right way. I think that process of discipleship that I went through has given me a real burden, revelation and conviction that's probably very unique. Yes. Because there's no question in my mind. It is the key yep. to transformation and, and sustainable revival. Yeah. And it's duplicatable. Yeah. That's the part that you've helped me with. It's duplicatable. So my process from going from brokenness to, to, uh, and pain to be 
torn down by God, to rip all that out, and then to rebuild it all. Yeah. That, that, that process is duplicatable. Yeah. It's like healing. You get healed like that, which is good, but sometimes they say it's better to go through the process of healing because then you can teach others. Yeah. It becomes duplicatable. And I think we've been able, by the grace of God, to create a system that actually allows discipleship to be duplicatable. Yeah. And one of the keys to discipleship is to disciple means to child train. Literally means to, to train a child or to raise a child. And that's when the Lord said, that's what your pastor did to you. He loved you like his own son. Yeah. And if, will you love my children wow. like you love your own children? Yeah. And if you're willing to do that, I'll give you an army. Yeah. And that's what we're committed. And I'm, I'm not enough, Russell. No. So now I have to activate thousands of fathers and thousands of, in a sense, yeah. spiritual mothers to be able to, to take care yeah. and father a fatherless generation yeah. is what we're dealing with right now. Yeah. And it's only going to get worse. So I think part of the curse lifting off the generation is discipleship because we can father a fatherless generation. Malachi said that. Yeah, and Jesus said it this way in Matthew 28, go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them into the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. So discipleship is immersing them in the identity of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. So you have a system that is baptizing. The word baptize means to uh, continue to immerse. It's like I got a white towel and I put it in a red dye. I don't pull it out once, one encounter. I continue until it takes on the nature and culture or the identity of what it's being dipped into. And that's what you're doing. You're discipling people into identity because really the issue is identity. When you forgave uh, your stepfather, your mother, your, um, your father, and you had a revelation of the Father heart of God towards you, that changed how you thought about Him, but also about you, which is identity. And the systems all are what push people to that way. Identity, proper identity, will then move you into purpose. Yes. Because great purpose is never attached to babyhood, Christianity. That's true. God only gives great purpose to those that are mature yeah. because they can handle it. Yeah. So that discipleship process is actually a key to fulfilling destiny and purpose. Yeah. I, I wasn't able to handle the weight of life, ministry, the way I'm now with a false identity. Yeah. I had to be discipled into my new identity. Then the purposes of God could come forward. Yeah. And I think one of the things Another thing you were along those lines of system, the one thing I always have to watch, and, and this is powerful because you prophesied this in, in, uh, in, in, in Europe over, over me, and it was accurate. He said, some people say, pick up the revival. Pick up the revival. And others say, no, put down the revival, pick up the system. But God has given you something unique where it's, Revival and system yeah. for a sustainable yeah. move of God. Yeah. And you need both of those. Yeah. And you need them consistently and you need them both weighty. Yeah. So weighty revival, weighty system. Yeah. And that balance, only God can balance that. Because if you go too structured, the Holy Spirit move. You move, you move them out. Yeah. If you go too spirit, it's not duplicatable. Yeah. Because now, Russell, we can multiply for our system every 12 weeks. Yeah. So every 12 weeks, we are launching leaders to run small groups that have been through a, at least a one year to two year process yeah. of discipleship. And we're launching 50 to 60 every 12 weeks. Now, starting the first of the year, it looks like we'll be launching 150 to 200 every 12 weeks. Wow. So you, you're talking 800 groups in a year, maybe, yeah. in the next year or two, wow. every year. That's that's like third world country style revivals yeah, that, in America. Yeah, yeah. it is amazing. I, I think um, one of you, the great churches in the world that God is building is there with you and, and Pastor Liz. And the, what I love about it is you have a spirit that wants to learn and have impartation. 
and you also have a, an anointing to release teaching and, and impartation. Uh, a river, not a reservoir. And so what's happening now around the world is people, I remember people would ask you, shall I come to them and run it? And I said, no, get them to come to you because they need to see it in its, uh, in its originality, in its pure form. And now, literally, in the midst of a pandemic or a COVID situation, you are multiplying groups like no one I know on planet Earth. It is absolutely crazy. But that didn't happen in just this season. It happened in the build-up season to get to this season. You know, Russell, God takes what the devil means for evil, turns around. The blessing of the COVID was because we had to go video, we were able to put the whole system on video. So now I think it's at 10 nations. People are being able to, and it's all PDF. And so it actually forced us to be able to, to put it. And I think there's like five or six ministries in Australia doing yeah. it now. And the same results. Yeah. It's almost like, not magic, but because God doesn't respect persons, yeah. people, but he does honor. And I believe this, God, God gave me this word I, and many, many years ago. God gives revival systems. Yeah, it's true. God gives revival systems and he gives structure. And I tell the guys, take whatever you mind stuff, you don't have to like copy it. As long as the principles are there, yeah. it'll work. Yeah. You don't have to call it lifestyle of freedom. You don't have to have all my classes. It's the it's really the best way is the process of that man and woman of God, if they can put that down, yeah. create a system pathways, and then put those that God sends them because they need it on that process, then they'll get the same results as those pastors. The same and, and the beauty is we're not looking at a, a short-term result, we, look, we have a long-term vision for people. Oh. With my children, I didn't, just didn't have a vision for when they were one or two or five or six. I had a vision for their whole life. And that's what discipleship is, is it says, I'm not just going to look at this moment, oh, I get that, they do that, they learn that skill, they learn that. No, I want to teach them a lifestyle of success. And that's what you're doing, like I don't know, on the planet. Um, your, your praise and worship is passionate hunger. And if you look at everything, Hunger is the key that sustains systems and sustains revival. Without hunger for God and hunger to change, we don't do it. Um, I want to close with, uh, you have had the experience of coming, flying to see Planet Shakers internationally, not just in Australia, but you flew into Manila. What was that experience like? Well, I think that's one of those situations where you have the Philippine, the Filipino culture. It's like Latino yeah. in a way. I think more passionate. Then you get, <laughs> then you get Planet Shaker, <laughs> and you drop them in that. Boom. Yeah. It's un, it's indescribable. Yeah. You, you you have to do it at least once in your lifetime. Yeah. You have to. And I, I and I already told my team, my worship team, they got to, they go, oh, we're going to go to Australia. I said, no, no, this year, well, next year, I go, why don't we try the Philippines just one time? It will wreck you. Yeah. Because you've never seen anything like that. Remember when they, they just, this, the, the roar, and it doesn't stop. <laughs> and you just sit back. I looked at my wife. I looked at Neil, and I go, and then Neil's that look like, I try to tell you. you know, like, And it's just, Praise God. Yeah. It, praise the Lord. It's amazing. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's God. And that's why I love being around you. I love prophetic. I love modernness. I love the re- breakthrough you carry, Russell. You have discipleship. And you don't, you don't have you, you, you manipulation control. Because that's one of the things with discipleship. You, you can manipulate and control. And that's terrible because that's not real discipleship. That's not good parenting. You want people to be able to, they have to be able to make it without you. Pastor Jason, there are people listening to your story and uh, they might have been through abuse, uh, been addicted to things, tormented, going through challenges in their time right now. And uh, they need a breakthrough. And I, I'm going to ask you, you've got a great anointing for breakthrough in your life. That's one of the reasons we love you. Um, 
we're going to join our faith and we're going to believe God that he is going to impact people right now through your story, through your life. You know, the word testimony basically means do it again so that God can bring breakthrough and freedom. And that's what you're seeing with discipleship in your church. And so let's pray for people right now. I'm going to get you to lead us and we're going to see breakthroughs happen in people's lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority Mm -hmm. over every wicked and unclean thing that would attach itself to your people. I break it now. I break it now in Jesus' name. I break it. I break the power of Satan and I release the power of God. I break it. I break it in Jesus' name. And Mm -hmm. Father, I pray for that bomb of Gilead. I pray for the anointing to heal the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you for the anointing that heals the brokenhearted. I rebuke the spirit of suicide and hopelessness. For you will live and you will not die. And you will declare the works of the Lord. Father, I decree and declare over those listening that they will know you. And they will carry out great exploits. And Father, I pray every form of shame, condemnation from their past. In Jesus' name, we bury that in the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we decree and declare that they go forward in your name and they carry out the will of God. Father, I pray for every father and mother believing for their children that we stand in agreement and we say, Satan, take your hand off them. We break your power Mm -hmm. in Jesus' name and we command them to come home from distant lands. We prophesy that all their children shall be taught by the Lord and great, oh God. Yes, Lord. And great will be the peace mm. of your children. Yes, Lord. And in righteousness they shall be established. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Wow. People are getting touched and ministered to right now. Jason. We want to thank you. You are such an amazing man of God. You and your wife are an incredible team. We love you at Planet Shakers. You have been such an amazing impact. Uh, Your love for God, love for the presence of God, your loyalty. You know, I know you've got my back and I've got your back. And God positions relationships and friendships to to release the kingdom of God. And I'm so honoured to call you a brother. I'm so blessed to have you in my life. You are such a blessing to us. You rang me the other day, encouraged me with a word. That's that's what you're like. And you're a man of strong faith and strong power. And Planet Shakers truly call you not only friend, but you are a family member. And uh, we just can't wait to see you again. You've been such a blessing to us. And we'll see you soon. God bless you.